Hello. Hello. It's Mr. Creepy Voice is back. Uh, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. That's it. No website. <laughs> Nothing. I got rid of everything. Yep. So, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and I'm going to bore you today or tonight by telling you all about my internet <laughs> adventures that's what I'm going to do just over the last few days and um, yeah where do I start I'll oh, just to let you know if you haven't listened to me before then I the point of these recordings is that I bore you to sleep and you know I'll just talk about stuff I suppose I'm a fairly quiet talker anyway but when I record these quite often it's late at night like early hours of the morning so I'm a little bit more quieter because I don't want to disturb neighbours or anything and in my home where I live so I could just said one of those sentences couldn't I just where I live or in my home, where I live, in the town where the building is, where I'm sitting now, is quite a sparsely furnished room, the living room. Therefore, it can get a little bit echoey, a little bit, and I think possibly my voice may carry a little bit but the reason I've got a I don't know it's it's not so much that I live kind of a zen um, lifestyle it's more I don't know, I used to have quite a few bookcases in here. I used to have a sofa in here. And I had Andre, he destroyed the sofa. And one day, I think it was two years ago, a mouse appeared uh, in my room, in you know, in the living room. And I couldn't catch it. I was trying to catch it. There was so much stuff. So in the end, I, I took everything out of the room bit by bit with the hope of being able to I put a humane uh, mouse catcher down. And Basically, what happened is there was other mice in the building. The mouse accidentally entered my home because I've got Andre. It's a little ferret, and trust me, a mouse would not want to come anywhere near him if he could avoid it. So he can't. The mouse seemed to have got trapped here. <coughs> Oh, excuse my coughing. That's nice. It's nice and relaxing, isn't it? Oh, I might blow my nose in a minute. That'll relax you. And in the end, the mouse kind of got out, and that was it. The vermin would not want to be in this building. Well, not in my flat because of Andre. It's just simple as that. 
this is his territory and you know he wouldn't allow it to frighten anything away which he did so it must have just I don't know how it got in might have even come in the front door um, which would be a bit weird I did not remember giving it keys but um so you'd use stilts to reach the keyhole and mind you if it could reach the keyhole it could have climbed through the letterbox it's a weird situation actually because oh, I'll talk about it another time but that mouse really wanted to get out of this building did not want to stay here it was in the room, in the front room. I went to bed. And I could hear it scratching all night long, trying to get out of the front room. I'm going to back. And whenever I went to open the door, the mouse was nowhere to be seen. So what I thought, I'm, I've started to think am I seeing things am I hearing things oh, this is weird so I set a camera up and I videoed I basically set it set up uh, maybe it was the phone or a webcam or something and just pointed it towards the front door you know the bottom of the front door in that whole area and left it on for a few hours and I went to bed so I wake up in the morning and I watch rewatch the the video. And it was just one one little mouse. And you'd be amazed at how slowly they move when there's no one around. Seriously, it was walking between from one side of the room to the other, having a little sit down, getting a flask of coffee out, having a cup of coffee. You know, took his hard hat off, put it back on, and carried on with his job. Like to get to the other side of the room. It's like, what? Seriously, it's like, what? And it destroyed the bottom of the the, of the door on the inside completely ripped the door the bottom of the door off he didn't completely rip the bottom <laughs> I'm exaggerating there wasn't a hole in the door a big massive hole you know I didn't walk in and think my god someone's kicked the door in it wasn't like that you know it, but he had scraped the, like the wood or the enamel or whatever you want to call it that's on the front of the door at the bottom so it was made a bit of a mess plus I don't really I don't want to live where everything's really tidy where everything's kind of perfect and the city's there the city's over here there's another city over there and you know I mean, I could end up with this looking like a really lovely living room, but then I'd be end up eating on my lap. I mean, with a plate, obviously. I don't just put the food on my lap and eat it from there. Um, it burn my legs, wouldn't it, probably? But I suppose I could have it on a tray. Or a plate on a tray, I mean. Not just stick it all on a tray. Unless you clean the tray... That's the thing about McDonald's is if I get a McDonald's meal and I don't go into McDonald's very often I mean literally really really rarely now a couple of times a year which is strange but it's just the way it's worked out uh, I didn't plan it I wasn't in my diary I wasn't my to-do you know, list of things to do to accomplish um, but I just just don't go in there very often. But this, if 
forget a meal, let's say a quarter pound of chips, quarter pound of cheese, cheese, quarter pound of cheese, chips, and a banana shake or a strawberry shake. That used to be my thing. That used to be the thing. I, 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 to be fair, I wasn't that bothered about the fries because I'd never really never really loved the McDonald's fries because that's the thing if you're not from England you know if you live in another country uh, let's say America for example I don't know I know more about America than I do about probably any other country apart from this one um, because of the cultures and you know because just kind of, you know, television and movies and stuff, although that's not necessarily the best education. And when you, when McDonald's came here, because it wasn't a McDonald's where I lived. I lived in a, I moved around quite a lot, but I kind of settled down at the age of seven to the age of 15. So I had eight years where I was living, okay, I wasn't living in the same place the whole time, but I moved one, two, three times, but I was probably about, yeah, eight years old when I first, when I moved the last time. So I would say probably eight and a half Maybe even nine. Yeah, maybe even nine. When we moved into the bigger house. So, let's say nine for argument's sake. Uh, no, it was earlier than that though. Because my little brother was born when I was eight years old. And he would have... He was still a baby when we moved. That's part of the reason why we moved, because there was four children and two adults in a three-bedroom house. And it wasn't really ideal, although I did love that house. I didn't love it. I didn't, didn't want to marry it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't sometimes wonder would I want to marry Andre? Just obviously not in a kind of a weird way, but is there any is there an unweird way to want to marry a ferret? But it's just like who do I love the most in the whole wide world? And it's Andre, my little boy. But then I suppose really he's my son, so you can't really marry his son, can you? I suppose there are parts of the world where you can do such things, but uh, yeah, not 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 here. I, mean, I don't mean here, but not not anywhere in England. I don't think. Yeah, as far as I know. But with McDonald's, I I want to marry a ferret. That's weird, isn't it? If anything, it might annoy people, so it might be worth doing it for that. I wish I could find a serum to keep him, I don't know, the same age forever, you know? Because his uncle, which is another ferret, his uncle passed away uh, a few months ago. I think it was like January time. And, you know, he could practically, he could hardly walk for about a year or six months. But, if, you know, but he still had that, that energy, the kind of, you know, the cheekiness and the, the um, interest, you know, that, sort of the excitement for discovering new things and 
I don't know, just exploring, you know, that kind of thing. So, in McDonald's, here's the thing. See, I don't normally tell people this stuff, but this is the kind of stuff that's in my head, but I don't share it. Maybe that's where it should stay, but it's okay. I don't mind. And so I'll get a tray. I'm sure there was a time where you didn't get a tray with McDonald's. I'd just give you the stuff and they'd be in these polythene boxes and you'd just take it. But maybe there used to be trays. I forget. And the first time I went to McDonald's was in London when I was on a school trip and I was probably 14 and I was visiting what was part of the, the trip it was a an RE trip like religious, religious religious education trip so we travelled to London on a coach and I we rather we visited a synagogue a mosque a I think it was a Catholic church possibly a Sikh temple and a Buddhist centre uh, the London Buddhist Centre which is in Bethnal Green the only thing that really stood out to me was the Buddhist I liked all the old stuff, you know, like uh, the Catholic Church, because it's the old church, and then you've got the synagogue, and the big massive book, and the scriptures, and you know, and I think for me, yeah, that actually showed us some old scripture, it was thousands of years old or something. And with a Buddhist center, um, I suppose I was quite interested in Eastern philosophy and because of the martial arts and having watched so many Eastern films, you know, which were mainly where the martial arts films came from uh, China and Peking and I don't know there, there are so many different places I guess that they were made and in a lot of the martial arts films there was meditation you know there was, it was kind of part of it and the Shaolin monks of course they were Buddhists um, but also some of the most famous the famous for being some of the you know the greatest martial arts experts like Shaolin Kung Fu um, Shaolin boxers so yeah I kind of I suppose I connected those two together a little bit so I was interested in the Buddhism from that perspective, from a martial arts perspective. And I remember we, as a class, we all sat down and did some meditation. It's probably only for a few minutes, but we sat, you know, in whatever posture we were able to manage. I've never been massively flexible, to be fair. Um, they said, could you sit down on the floor? I said, no, I don't want to. I want to stand up. I want to lean against the post. I said, well, can you just maybe stay in one place? And No, I want to move around. I was very inflexible. And the... We do doing that cup of tea? I'm thirsty, I need I want a cup of tea. Yeah, but we don't even have a kettle in here. Ah, uh, 
bought a flask. Where did you get a flask from? Oh, I borrowed it off that mouse. Oh. Oh, yeah, Bob. Oh, yeah, you've met him too. Yeah, yeah. And then we did this meditation, and it was like a little bell. Was ding, ding. And I think they gave us all a bit of in, incest each. And we all lit that up. And, uh, yeah, it was really good. I was quite into incest for a while, but it just, I kind of gave it up. It was a bit, sometimes it's a bit smelly. It's a little bit, you know, sort of burns. And you can get different types, different, like, smells. Um, so there's, a, there's a company called Nag Champa. And uh, I used to work in a, a Buddhist shop, actually, when I was older. Or well, two, two, in fact. And I always had some incest on the go. With that place full of incest. It was like you could smell... Um, as you walked past the shop, you could smell the incest... You know, you could actually smell it. and But it wasn't just the incest that was going on within the shop. There's also incest upstairs. That was, you never got to see that. That, cause that was like more for uh, storage and, you know, the, the staff would go up there and uh, indulge in a bit of incest. The kind of, there's always one on the go, seriously. It's like, Wherever you go, like a bit of, bit of incest here, bit of incest there. It's like, and then the smell would mix together. So the one I went, the first shop I, I worked in, they'd been going for about 10 years, maybe longer. And the whole place smelled beautiful. It really, really did smell. And that was like 10 years worth of incest. And it really smelled good. But it didn't smell like any one... Uh, stick that was burnt, you know, it was just the whole, just a mixture, it was very strange, also, here's a weird thing, every now and then, we'd get a whiff of stale beer and cigarette smoke, but mainly stale beer, and I remember saying, oi, what on earth is that? He said, oh yeah. This is the person I was talking to. And I said, what do you mean, oh yeah? He said, well, this building that we're in now, because the building was actually downstairs, was the shop. And there was also a cellar downstairs as well. But that was what well, wasn't a cellar. Well, it was a cellar, but, you know, it was used as a storage room for the stock. And, but upstairs, which was a separate entrance, was where the Buddhist centre was. And that was two floor, two storeys high. But apparently, the downstairs bit used to be a pub. It used to be a bar. And they said it's, yeah, every now and then you get a whiff of stale beer. Like, How is that even possible? It hadn't been a bar for like a hundred years or something. I'm making that bit up, but I don't know how long. It's been, been a long time. It was, you know... So it's a long, long, back, long time. It was um, probably during the Ming Dynasty or something like that. It was, you know, it's, it's going back. You know, there were pirates. You know, the original cuddly pirates. You know, with the parrots on their on their elbows and stuff. Parrots for hands, not parrots for hands, was it? Yeah. Anyway. Pirates these days aren't quite as friendly, I don't think. 
didn't realize this is something that's not not particularly useful information but there was where were they from there was a like ships used to come here to I don't know I forget which part of the country it was and they used to kidnap people and use them as slaves sell them on as slaves English people just or British people they might have been called back then I don't know but they used to literally just um, get you know maybe they'd, they'd walk out of the pub drunk and they'd just they'd wake up as a slave on a galley ship somewhere and they weren't getting paid they were literally and they'd get sold abroad somewhere it's like wow I read. I was listening to the radio last night, and all this uh, Brexit stuff. There was this bloke, this man came on, and he was talking. It's, it's LBC that I listened to, and it was a man who phoned up, and he said that he thinks Cornwall should have a Brexit. Cornwall should be independent and then he said that everybody who voted to leave England should move leave England to leave Europe should move to Cornwall even if it meant standing by side by side with each other and you're not, not having much room to do anything It was an interesting conversation. It's like from one point he wanted independence for where he lives. Because it's, I suppose it's a nice place and, you know, he, he, you know, he wants it to be beautiful again and, or I don't know what his words were, but. He said that tourism has ruined the landscape or something. And then he said he wanted 17 million people moving there. That's a lot of litter. You know what I mean? So in McDonald's, there's always people in the garden, even this time of night. It's like four o'clock in the morning. I don't know if all people are being in bed. I know I'm not, but why isn't everybody else in bed snoring? Oh, I do love a good snore. I, um... And this is something I've done for years and years and years. So I'm in McDonald's, I'm at the counter. By the way, I don't use those machines. You know, those, those machines, you... I don't know if you have them where you are. But they have uh, the touchpad machine screens where you order your food and you pay for it there and then you collect it you get a ticket with a number it used to be like that in the unemployment office you get a number or the housing benefit office you'd get a number and you'd wait for hours and hours or doctors I think used to do that as well or the meat counter or the fish counter in supermarkets they used to be like that the delicatessen they give you a number and you'd wait I don't know if it's still like that but oh, 
wow, yeah, they do that. Anyway, there's another system, Argos, it's a shop. I don't know if you have it where you are, but it's... Argos is this, it's a catalogue shop. And it used to be really good, because, well, it was... It's very much like the bookies, like a betting shop. Um, so you'd go in and they had exactly the same little pens that they had in the betting shops tiny little blue pens I think they were and they weren't you know they kind of you felt like you were a giant while you was holding it seriously a tiny little how how you're supposed to write with it, I don't know, but I suppose it was it was really built just for to make a cross or a tick, you know. But uh and there used to be these pieces of paper which you'd write on them what you wanted, the number. And you take the number which is below the picture of the item that you want out of the catalogue and it was a proper paper catalogue with Hundreds of pages. Those of you who are not sure what books are or catalogues, um, it's a little bit like a web page, except you can wipe your ass with it. No, that's not a good one. Not good. It's, uh, it's how would you describe a paper to somebody that who's never seen it? You know, perhaps have had the internet their whole life and they've never actually read a magazine or read a newspaper, but they've got all of the information from websites. And that will happen. There will come a time when I don't know how to explain it anyway it was, it, they were glossy they were glossy magazines I remember my uh, I used to love looking through the catalogues which my stepmom had and she had quite a few different ones and I used to read it and she'd be doing something else watching telly and I'd be there and I'd be pretending to look at the toys but actually, I was looking at the brass. It's true. It's uh, I'm not, you know quite an early age as well. Just I think it's just I could never figure out how to get her to buy me one though. So how do you dis- how do you explain that? I bought a BMX bike once. I've got this memory of having a skateboard but I don't think I ever did I think it's one of those memories that it's just a lie it's not the thing is even though it's a lie even though it's like a made up story in my memory that I don't think ever really happened I'm still really rubbish on it that's the sad thing about it. I don't think I ever actually had a skateboard, but in my memory, I keep falling off. Why can't I have a memory if it's going to be made up where I'm doing somersaults and winning medals and stuff? It's, that don't make sense. It's not even a real memory. Why have I got to be rubbish in a in a made up memory? <sighs> Oh yeah, so in Argos, just Google it if you don't know what it is. A R G O S. It's a it's a, like a retail catalogue store. Anyway, how it used to be a like a betting shop, because you'd you'd look at a picture of something, you didn't get to see it, just the picture. Uh, you couldn't touch it, couldn't feel it, couldn't shake it, nothing, because. What you do is you 
go up to the counter you hand the slip of paper over the same as you do in a uh, a betting shop and you basically take a punt and that's what it used to be like because you know, 30 odd years ago not, I'm sure now quality is a lot better but the amount of stuff that I bought from Argos and I had to take it back it didn't work when I was like you know in my teens this is supposed to vibrate but it's not but sir <laughs> what is that no don't worry about it um, I bought a tape recorder once and it didn't work bought a stereo system didn't work it just honestly it was really a case of most of the stuff did work to be fair but I had a few problems uh, over the years but not a not huge amount but anyway you go in there so it would be like a bit of a punt like the betting shop you'd, you'd hand the ticket in you'd pay your money and you took your chances basically and they would call out the number and as technology increased there'd be a screen with a number on it and then flash when your number was ready 406 and someone might say 406 but another person might say 406 you know it depends on what their voice was and they'd go and collect it and I'd be like oh I wonder what it's going to be <laughs> no you knew what it was going to be but it's like what's is it going to work does it need batteries if it needs batteries does it have batteries with it you know all that kind of stuff so it was uh now it's all screens in in Argos you press the screens the same in a job centre all screens you press the screens all computer screens and now it's the same in yeah it's the same in McDonald's and it's the same in my doctor's surgery screens that's a good idea not only do you get loads of people that are ill all in one room together coughing and spluttering over each other now you get them all to touch the same stuff I touch that touch that number you touch that number so what's your cholera I'm not sure what you got okay hep you got okay you've got flu you've got, yeah okay let's all mix it all together yeah I won't touch the screens I won't and if I have to and the only ones I touch is Argos and I'll touch it with my knuckle or with the what's that bit in the middle of your finger not the knuckle it's not the end of the finger but it's the bit where your fingers bend but it's the outside I don't think anyone's noticed that it's there am I the first person to notice that it's the joints isn't it but what are they called anyway I tend to use that if I can the same as I'm on a bus I use that part I don't use my fingertips my fingertips are specific for picking my nose no they're not not specific for that but I like to keep my hands clean so I try not to use my fingertips not for everything because that'd be weird wouldn't it uh trying to cook with my elbows if I don't need to you don't do you but I don't use my fingers I will not touch the screens on somewhere where I'm going to be eating I'm going to be using my hands with food 
I'm not touching something where statistically how many people wash their hands when they've been to the toilet you know you know so I don't you know I'm just saying I don't want to touch that and definitely not in a doctor's surgery I'm never ever going to do that and so yeah I just refuse I do I just go straight up to the counter in McDonald's and they don't know what to do because they're so busy working it's like there's this empty space where a till is they don't expect anybody to want to pay at the till and order and I do I've only been in twice uh, since I've had the thing but I think we're both just for cheeseburgers I might have had a quarter pound of cheese although I might have just had a I'm pretty sure I had a strawberry shake and it was so refreshing oh Yeah, and also doctor surgery. I'll walk straight up to the to the counter. And the idea is you book an appointment on the phone or online or whatever, and then you book yourself in when you get there. So, you, so the uh, people at the counter don't have to do as much, maybe, or they can focus on other things other than. Uh, part of being a receptionist is to reception isn't it I don't know if that's a correct a correct kind of title what do you do during the day I reception I reception people being receptive receptionist receptive being receptive being available to others maybe so when I'm in McDonald's and this has been happening for a long time um, you get the it used to be that they would put everything and it would be all kind of sealed up and it would be on a tray now the burgers in a cardboard thing and this is a cheeseburger and it's just wrapped up in kind of I'll tell you what the cheeseburger is wrapped up in it's very similar to the toilet paper I had at school that like see through um, tracing paper kind of stuff it's pretty much the same. I think that's what happened. Is they maybe school? I don't know. Schools might still use it, but when I think about that toilet paper, I think the toilet paper actually smelt worse than what I was using it for. It was just it had a weird smell about it. You know, if anything was recycled, that was. So I. When I get a tray and the food is handed to me on the tray and there's usually an advert like a a piece of paper like a big big piece of paper advertising I don't know Monopoly or whatever they're um, doing to entice young children to eat unhealthily and I it, with the fries if there's any hanging out and touching the tray I can't eat them I have to chuck them out because I don't know if they wash the trays or not I don't know how often they wash the trays but I'm not chancing it. I am not chancing it. And that's not all I've got to say about McDonald's. In England, fries, French fries, 
used to be these crisps. Which were what you call chips. And they were actually called French fries. And they were chip, what you call in America rather, sorry. Chips. You know. Uh, <sighs> do I have to go through the whole cooking process? You know, things you get in bags that are kind of made of potato. Partly salt and flavoured. And they're quite yummy actually. So we call what you what in America call French fries chips, but we have big chips or well, a lot bigger than the ones that you get, you know, like a normal chip. I don't know what a normal chip size would be. I would say a normal chip has got to be four times thicker if not bigger than a French fry, I would say. Mind you, in the 90s, they started doing the, what is those chips with the skins on? Oh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't dislike it. I mean, you know, Especially if it's free, I'll try anything that's free. Bogey salad, yeah, brilliant. As if it's free, I'll, you know. Caterpillar chutney. It's, but I don't. I'm just remembering. I suppose if I. When I was like in my 30s or late 20s. Because I was living in London, there was a lot more choice as far as eating. I mean, it's just thousands and thousands of places to eat. If you go go anywhere pretty much in London, there's always somewhere to eat. And probably hundreds of thousands of restaurants, actually. I might be exaggerating, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of miss that a little bit. So, I've not actually spoken about what I was going to speak about, which was the website. After days and days of working on the websites, trying to get everything to work really trying really and it didn't come together it didn't work how I wanted it to be and out of frustration I deleted one of the websites then called up the host can you reinstate it no it's gone unless I pay $150 so I, oh okay and yeah I deleted quite a few of my let me bore you to sleep recordings because I was trying to make it a premium podcast so not not all of them but just um, like the archive would be you know a charge to listen to the old sessions well, it didn't come to plan, so I've had to go back. Well, I didn't have to, but I've gone back and re-uploaded all of the Let Me Boy to Sleep recordings, fresh, from one all the way up to this one. Well, up to 126, and this will be the, the next one. And but it's all up to date now, hopefully online and... It should be fine. So yeah, I'm gonna. I've made a few changes. I've got. 
I've suspended my Facebook account and my Twitter account because I just want to have a break from that. So don't feel if you are listening still and don't think that I've blocked anyone or deleted anyone because I haven't. I've just uh, reactivated or deactivated yeah, deactivated the, the accounts. And there's a quite a part of me wants to live a bit more in the real world, a little bit more. You know, perhaps go out a little bit more. And having spent so much time working on the websites and getting quite good at it actually I'm quite I can put together a website quite well quite quickly as well really um, it's, it feels a little bit like I've got this electric item whether it's a watch or a, a radio or you know whatever it might be and it's very complicated to take apart and it's even more complicated to put back together because you have to be really careful and everything but then eventually I can basically do it so much quicker and it's easy it gets easier and easier and easier and easier and easier a bit like sleeping really I suppose when you listen to my boring voice and I'm a little bit like that now with building websites I can just I've used pretty much every single host that there is every single type of building platform that you can get online including WordPress and various others so but I can't afford what's the point in me having a podcast website when the podcast is already available on Podbean and other places this podcast is available in loads of different places lots of different podcast hosts including places that aren't even online you know they're on uh, apps they're on phone you know uh, podcast apps so they're not even uh, registered on the internet like if you go online um, and let you search so cast boxes is one such app but there's quite a few and it's like wow it's on there but it's not coming up on an ordinary uh, google search so I don't really know what that was about so I got rid of everything really all the I'm trying to cut down the expenses as well which is part of what I was trying to do so now my only expenses regarding this is fifty sixty I don't know, maybe seventy to eighty dollars a month, possibly. So it's, it's gone down a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether to keep my SoundCloud podcast because I do get quite a few people, or well not a lot, but I get people liking me, and I go to their page and they're trying to sell me SoundCloud listens like you know me to pay them £30 or £40 and they'll give me 10,000 listens of my podcast so I do wonder whether SoundCloud do that themselves whether they're as when I hear, when I see that, I kind of wonder: Are there any legitimate people actually listen to my podcast? Because 
I just don't get any feedback. I think I've got one comment or one one message in the last year on the SoundCloud um, from someone called Nuggets. Is it Nuggets? And yeah, I go to some SoundCloud channels, podcasts, and there's loads of comments, loads of. So I don't, I don't get it. I don't really know what's going on. It's uh, I appreciate that people do go to, to Facebook and Twitter to well, my, mainly Facebook to kind of contact me and stuff. But I'm not on there at the moment. I might come back. I might wake up tomorrow and think I'm gonna start Facebook again. Yeah, Facebook. Possible. Likely, I'm not sure, but possible. So I need to, in my mind, I need to sort of change my thinking from trying to turn this online podcast work that I do these sessions I make instead of trying to turn that into a a living you know earning a living out of it but still keeping it free which is what I wanted to do but maybe having a few bits that I charge for but keep still keeping you know 90% of everything I do free I might just I think I'm just maybe going to not pursue that that line of thinking anymore and just make the sessions hope that people benefit I mean as it is people vote with their feet that's what I was always told you know if you've got a restaurant or if you've got a nightclub people let you know if they like it because they come keep coming back if you've got a restaurant and no one's coming in there's a reason for that especially if it used to be busy it might not be anything bad but there's a good chance it's because they don't there's something they don't like about the restaurant or it might not be that but you know financials and stuff but it's kind of you know like a comedy club or nightclub or going to see someone in concert you know people buy tickets if no one buys a ticket to go and see someone then there's a reason for that so it's you know I'll just keep doing this and Yeah, just keep doing it. I'm going to do some other stuff as well. But I need to... I feel I need to start inputting a bit more into my... Inside me. That sounds bad. Um, Sort of reading a bit more maybe, you know? And... Yeah, you can only... Because at the moment I've got a... A a toothpaste tube. And I'm really kind of putting way too much effort trying to get the toothpaste out of this tube. When I've got another 20 tube, you know, that I can break into. I've got loads. I've got enough toothpaste probably for the next two years. But I still like, oh, I want to get more out of this one. The only way to get more out of it is if something's put into it. It needs to have toothpaste squared inside it. So then there's toothpaste to square it out. But then that would entail getting a new toothpaste tube, putting them together, like uh, 
some kind of weird toothpaste orgy and then and then filling one the old one from the new one so I might as well just use a new one you know I mean if you had pint of milk you had an old pint of milk and it was empty you just it was a plastic container and it was emptied you know you just drunk the last bit of it you went to the shop and bought a new carton of milk a new pint of milk you wouldn't empty it into the old carton would you because even though you might have drunk out of that other carton the idea of putting new fresh milk into an old carton is a bit grim It's like blowing your nose on the curtains. It just, it just don't seem right. Unless it's someone else's home. But yeah. So I'm going to leave you on that lovely visual. Have a lovely, lovely day. Lovely evening. Lovely week. And my plan is to revisit you again be here again tomorrow and a lot more regularly hopefully hopefully every day so just come back wherever you've come from to listen to me whether you're on Spotify Spreaker SoundCloud iHeartRadio Radio FM Stitcher, you know, tune in, so many different ones. iTunes, of course, or Apple Podcast, as I think they're more known. I thank you. Lots of love. Bye.